let's move on to the interesting stuff that's the how should we choose a routing policy okay so there are multiple options for us for choosing a routing policy so let's go over them one by one and let's see which one is the perfect fit for our use case okay let's start off with simple routing policy so well a simple routing policy is pretty simple and the simple routing lets you configure standard dns record so with simple routing you typically route traffic to a single resource so you have your application and you set a record and route traffic to the url based on the record type as shown in the example above so you have one uh, resource that you have so you send the dns request to that and you get the response time with the ttl so you can't create multiple records that you have uh, the same name and type but you can specify multiple values in the same record such as a multiple ip address so if multiple values are given root 53 returns all the values to the recursive resolver in the random order and the resolver returns the values to the client then the client chooses which values to use and submits the request okay so let's suppose it has three ip addresses in the record of the same name then you will get one out of those three in random and remember health checks cannot be attached to a simple routing policy so remember in simple routing policy what happens here is you have a single point of contact and dns actually has single mapping but you can have multiple ips attached to it so let's suppose if you have three you will get one out of that at random and the client then chooses a value and submits the request okay so i hope this was simple enough let's move on so as the name suggests weightage is associated with the priority based on the percentage provided to a given entity and you tend to distribute your data based on what the percentage is associated with the receiver so weighted routing lets you associate multiple resources so either it can be a single domain name let's suppose like pythology.com or a subdomain name uh, like apps.pythology.com with power to choose how much traffic can be distributed or how much traffic should be distributed so post which you can create records with the same name and type of each resource and assign them uh, assign each record a relative weight so let's suppose we have an example here so weight of the specified record by some of the weights of all the records so if you want to send a small amount of traffic to a record then uh, let's suppose you assign one as its weight so if the weight of record a is one over one and 1, 255 so record a gets one by 256 of the traffic so if you uh, put that in the formula above so 1 by 1 plus 255 and the uh, other resources get 255 by 256 that is 255 by 1 plus 256 so if you want to stop sending traffic to a resource you can change the weight for that record to zero for this to work you enter an integer between zero and 255 to disable routing to this resource set weightage or weight to zero so if you set weight to zero for all the records in the group, traffic is routed to all resources with equal probability. So this ensures that you don't accidentally disable routing for a group of weighted records. As we went through all the theoretical part, let's see the visualization for this. So we have the user and we have the three EC2 instances and in between we have the root of three DNS. So in weighted routing policy, what happens is you can divide your traffic based on the percentage of uh, weight that you want to give to a particular resource or you want to direct to a particular resource so let's suppose we have the ec2 instance one directed 60 percent of our traffic based on the weightage principle that we have and then the 30 percent goes to the ec2 instance two and 10 percent to the ec2 instance three okay so i hope this was clear let's move on so when we talk about latency latency is the time difference between the request made to the request received or the response received okay so in simple terms you can call it as a delay in the time you get the requested data back to you and there can be many reasons there can be a delay as a network bandwidth database response or application code or it can be a region where your data is located which most of the time is the problem and with a lot of applications as well and that's where we are going to discuss about latency based routing policy okay so if your application is hosted in multiple aws regions you can improve performance for your users by serving the request from the aws region that provides the lowest latency to use latency based routing you create latency records for your resources in multiple aws regions when aws root 53 receives a dns request for your domain or subdomain it determines which aws region you have created latency records for and determines which region gives the user the lowest latency and then selects the latency record for that particular region okay 
So root 53 responds with the value for that selected record, such as an IP address for the web server. So for example, so let's suppose you have elastic load balancer in the US West Oregon region and in the Asia Pacific region as well, let's say in Singapore. So you already have created the latency record for each load balancer. So here's what happens when a user in London enters the name of your domain in the web browser. The first thing that happens here is that DNS routes the query to a root 53 name server. And then the root 53 refers to its data on the latency between London and the Singapore region and between London and Oregon region. So if the latency is lower between London and Oregon region, a route 53 responds to the query with the IP address for the Oregon load balancer. Okay, if the latency is lower between London and Singapore region, route 53 responds to the IP address for the Singapore load balancer. Simple enough, right? So I hope this was clear enough. And uh, let's discuss this once again. So let's suppose you have latency records across multiple regions. And let's suppose a user from London is requesting for a particular resource. Then once you hit the URL, it goes to the DNS and route 53 checks the latency tables. And based on which location it gets the lowest latency, it redirects the traffic to that particular region. So failover routing lets you route traffic to a resource when the resource is healthy or to a different resource when the first resource is unhealthy. The primary and the secondary resources or the records can route traffic to anything from an Amazon S3 bucket that is configured as a website to a complex tree of records. If you look at the example here, we have our user and we have our instance. One is our primary and the other one is our secondary instance and we have our root 53 which is sitting in between and uh, which will act as our failover routing. And we will have a health check to determine our failover. And this is our health check. And then in case of failure, it will redirect traffic to the secondary instance. And that's how it works. Okay, so the secondary that we have is our failover. As I already told you, the primary and the secondary records can route traffic to anything from an Amazon S3 bucket that is configured as a website or a complex tree of records. So there is something that I want you to remember for the exam. So there are two policies that we have according to failover routing policies. So one is the active active and the second one is the active passive. So you can use active active configuration when you want all of your resources to be available the majority of the time. Okay, so active active means when you want all of your resources to be available the majority of the time. And when resource becomes unavailable, root 53 can detect that it's unhealthy and stop including it when responding to queries. And we can use active passive configuration when you want a primary resource or a group of resources to be available the majority of the time. And uh, you want a secondary resource or group of resources to be on standby in case all of the primary resources become unavailable. Okay, so when responding to queries, root 53 includes only healthy primary resources. And if all the primary resources are unhealthy, root 53 begins to include all the healthy secondary resources in response to DNS queries. Okay, so active active means when you want all of your resources to be available the majority of the time and active passive when you want to create or even you want primary resources or group of resources to be available. The prime difference is the secondary resources will only be used when all the primary resources are unhealthy. Okay, so I hope that was clear. So the next one on the list of root 53 routing policy is the geolocation policy. So geolocation policy lets you choose the resources that serve your traffic based on the geographic location of the user meaning the location that the DNS query is originated from. So if you wish to redirect all the traffic from Oregon and Ohio to an elastic load balancer at Canada. So we have our EC2 instances across America. And if we wish to redirect all the traffic from Ohio and Oregon region to an elastic load balancer at Canada, we can do that. So what are the advantages of this? So you can localize your content and present them and present some or all of your websites in the language of your users. And it lets you choose, or let's suppose you have want some of the resources to be available to India. You can choose to have Hindi or English based on the routing policy. And as well as you can redirect distributions of con content to only the locations in which you have distribution rights. So let's suppose you don't have a distribution rights to China, so you don't need to. You can have it 
based on the routing policies and there are a few caveats to this as well so for records created for overlapping regions priority goes to the smallest geographical location geolocations works by mapping ip addresses to locations uh, that's a pretty straightforward idea i guess because if you have a particular region that you want to route traffic to then the particular ips will be mapped to that particular location and note that route 53 returns a no answer response for queries that don't have a default record created so make sure you have one that's it then let's move on to the last one so the last one that we have here is multi-value answer routing and it lets you configure amazon root 53 to return multiple values such as ip addresses for your web server so you can specify multiple values for almost any record but multi-value answer routing also lets you check the health of each resource so root 53 returns only values for the healthy records or resources okay but remember that it's not a substitute for a load balancer but the ability to return multiple health checkable ip addresses is a way to use dns to improve availability and load balancing so let's see the example here we have a user who is ready with its browser and our ec2 instance which is currently serving the application so here we have a root 53 let's apply our multi-value answer routing to this okay so here as you can see the same domain name can have multiple a records which are basically the values and when the user makes a request it will check which address is currently healthy and here the healthy one is uh, 192.6.23.1 so based on the routing policy it will return the same and the user will be able to access the requested page or data so let's have a look at our record table so we have our dns name and its corresponding record type which is our a record uh, with its matching multi-value ips and here as well we set the ttl that is set to 60 seconds and the health check id for monitoring so when the health check is success then it will be returned back as a response from the request for the request and there can be up to eight a records attached in the routing policy for dns queries so i hope this was interesting and that brings us to the end of route 53 routing and that's all from my side today do make sure you meet me in the next session of aws until then it's pytholic signing off